In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. My friends, we gather today to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. And as we do so, let us prepare ourselves by calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, through your resurrection, you have called us to be men and women of faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, because of your resurrection, you are the foundation of our hope. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have taught us to love one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God, Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, look upon us with love. You redeem us and make us your children in Christ. Give us true freedom and bring us to the inheritance you promised. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts from the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at the table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also, Philip, Proctorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert of, to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your mercy be on us, O oh God, as we place our trust in Truth indeed, and all your works 
First letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in the scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it should not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and the stone that will make my people stumble, and a rock that will make people fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as it is in their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own so that you may announce the praises of him who are called out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. And Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else Believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Last week, we gathered to celebrate uh, the Sunday of the Good Shepherd. And for those who were with us last weekend, you might remember that I talked about as good sheep to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, keeping our attention on him, following him where he wants to lead us. And I think that causes us to ask a question today. Who is Jesus for us? Who is Jesus in my own heart? Who do I say that Jesus is? It is a question that, in a sense, was asked in our gospel today. Jesus saying that, you know, where, where he is going and that he is the way. And yet the disciples say, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus tells them, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. A Sunday like this, we have to ask ourselves, do we, do we really believe that? Is Jesus really the source of our life? Is Jesus the way in which I live my life? Is Jesus the source of all truth? Or do I tend to look in other places, in our society, with its many messages, can we say that, that any of those messages are, are really the source of truth or the way in which I want to live my life? Jesus. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. Because of his resurrection from the dead, that is the source of us believing that there is no other one but the Lord. And so we keep our eyes fixed on the source of truth, the way of life, the source of life itself, to follow him, to be his children, his followers. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now gather together our prayers and place them before our God this day that those who have never heard the gospel may hear it and put their faith in the word of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve as deacons and those preparing to be deacons, that they may grow in the spirit of service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, the people of God, claims as his own, may bear witness that he alone has the authority to give and take human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that we, the people of God, for our brothers and sisters who are homebound in hospitals and in nursing homes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear That all those whom God has called from his, this world may enjoy the peace and life of the world to come, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Almighty and eternal God, we ask you to hear these prayers that we place before you, for we make them in the name of your Son, Jesus, who is our Lord and our Savior forever and ever. Amen. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Lord God, by this holy exchange of gifts, you share with us your divine life. Grant that everything we do may be directed by the knowledge of your truth. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. He has made us children of the light rising to new and everlasting life. He has opened the gates of heaven to receive his faithful people. His death is our ransom from death. His resurrection is our rising to life. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, the death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant to be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. 
do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread and this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us stand as we pray together the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the sign of peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall.
let us stand to pray. Merciful Father, may these mysteries give us new purpose and bring us to a new life in you. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve our Lord. Hi everybody, Bishop Callahan here. Just a word to say thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your continued generosity to helping us to, to provide these uh, celebrations of the Mass and bringing the Mass to your home each week. Your support and the supplied support from the Diocesan Annual Appeal makes these broadcasts possible. So know that you're in our thoughts and prayers always when we celebrate the Mass, but know that you're in our thoughts and prayers each and every day. God be with you. Thank you.